All right, we live. Coming from the Caveman Studios in Buffalo, New York. Welcome to Caveman Corner with your host, Jeff. Captain Caveman! Thanks. Click subscribe and the bell. Do it now! We're here with son of a legend, Joe Taylor. What's going on, Joe? Not that much, man. Just hard and preparing for June 3rd. Man, I can't believe you took time out of your day. You're at a family anniversary. You come here to talk to us. And, man, we're so excited to have you here. I'm excited, man. I'm definitely excited for this one. It's my first time on you guys' show. Yeah, so I can't believe we've been trying to get you for a long time. You're a superstar, man. It's hard to get guys like you. <laughs> yeah, we got all three of them. We, have, we got Pat Mix. We got Solomon Refro. Now we got Joe Taylor. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely an honor to be here. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. So you're putting on a show uh, June 3rd. Uh, you're fighting Chris Romanowski yourself. How tough is that putting a whole show together and fighting on the same card? Oh, it's super tough. Um, this is my second event that I'm doing, uh, promoting, matchmaking, and training for this fight, you know, um, and taking care of my family and my business. It's tough, man, and I'm glad I have a strong team to help me out. So this time you're doing boxing first and having a live music show and then you guys are doing kickboxing. So how do we get tickets and can you tell us about the event itself? Yeah, you can get tick tickets by messaging me on Facebook, Joe Taylor. Um, you can get tickets at JT's Mixed Martial Arts, 30 Pine Street in Lockport, or you can get tickets at the door the day of the event. Awesome. Maybe next time we can help you sell tickets. So uh, our is there like an all-day pass or do you have to have tickets for each event or yeah. how does that work? We have an all-day pass. All-day pass is $100 and that includes the boxing one to four, the music five to seven, and my world title fight from eight to 11. That's the all-day pass um, for 100 or you can buy single tickets. For the boxing, it is 30 bucks for the floor seats and for the music, 25 And for my world title fight later that evening, it is 75 for the floor and 35 for the bleachers. And the VIP tables are sold out. Ha, that's awesome. That's great. That's great. Is this yeah. like a huge like scare running out arena for a whole day to put this uh, show on? Yeah, man. It's uh, you know, I got I got four wheelers riding down the street, but you know, <laughs> we're in the country. But uh what was that? I'm sorry, once again. Is it is it scary like running out a whole arena to, to put all this show on and man I hope everyone shows up and then it's, like you gotta worry about the stress of the fight too. Yeah, is it worries? Um my thing is, you know, we win some, we lose some, and I just want to put on a great show. You know, if you don't show up, then you miss out. And no matter what, I feel like I'm winning, no matter what. And um, you know, this fight is very important to me. And the most important thing to me is getting the victory and me and my opponent walking out that ring 100% healthy. You know, maybe bruised up. He can, he, he can be bruised up and, and banged up and all that. But you know what I'm saying. I want him to be able to make it home to his family after the doctors wake him up. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Uh, is it weird? Like, so do you negotiate the salary with him too? Like, so man, I'm going to fly you out and then I'm going to knock you out and then I'll fly you home and maybe I'll give you 300 bucks too. Like, is that like kind of how the negotiations go or yeah, that's, how does yeah, that work? That's, you know, we don't believe the knockout part out and uh, <laughs> the numbers, the 300 is very, very low. But I work with uh, WKA, Kickboxing Association, Brian Crenshaw. Um, he, do, he speaks with uh, WKA Europe. So there's another president over there on, in Europe that he communicates with and they the wk president in europe communicates with uh chris and um you know so it's a or wk is one of the biggest uh organizations in the world they've been around a very long time and that's who i've been fighting for for the last 10 years and um very organized and uh we ready we took care of business so we just waiting for him to show up so you're the champ. Is this like a mandatory title no. defense? Is this something that you have no, to No, it's open. This? The belt is vacant. Um, I'm a middleweight world champion for WKA. So I moved up in weight, the light heavyweight, 
at 198. So I've been fighting for the last 10 years at 185. And I'm like, uh, John Jones, I'm moving up in weight. And, uh, you know, so I'm fighting at 198 now. And it's open. You know, winner, winner is the light heavyweight world, WKA world champion. That's awesome. Uh, I just want to, like, bring in Corey Webster a little bit. Are you been training with Corey this whole time? Yeah, I train with Corey. Um, he's a busy man himself, you know. Um, he has a lot going on and taking care of his beautiful family. And, yeah, Corey, he's a warrior, and uh, he's a busy guy. But when he has time, he makes sure to, that we get together. And um, he laid that Corey Webster beat down on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a savage, dude. I love, yeah. like – like the last fight I saw you fighting a milk man, I'm like, man, his ankle's a little fucked up. And then Corey's like, hey, Joe, his ankle's a little fucked up. Like, you guys have, like, a great dichotomy when you guys talk and you guys work together. Like, it's just so tight. Watching you guys work is amazing. Yeah, man, I love that, dude. It's the connection with him. And, um, like, the milk man. Like, we meant to be talking about that fight. I'm disappointed in my performance that night. So, um, you know, I should have put him to sleep third round. And um, I was very disappointed. I got the, the win and everything, but I was disappointed. And I ended up fighting. I ended up taking another fight on short notice, the LFA fight at the casino. I took that fight on a five-week notice. I reached out to LFA, and I'm like, hey, I want to fight. I see you guys are fighting at the Falls Casino. I'm the hometown guy. Get me on the card. They got me on the card in one week. You know, and I seen that they had. You, you mind me keep going with this? No, keep yeah. going, man. Keep going. Yeah, so, uh, so um, you know, I was disappointed with the Milkman performance in Lockport. So after that fight, I'm like, man, I got to show these people I could fight. I got to put on a show. So I reached out to LFA, and I was like, hey, I want to be on the card. They got me on the card in a week. Um, so I had five weeks to train, and I picked the hardest person they gave me. They had three people and that were available. And I seen Ben Parrish, you know, he fought for Bellator twice, uh, man who was the underdog the first fight he had and he knocked edwards out you know i want him that's what i want i want to fight in bellator so um i picked ben and i said i gotta put on the show i gotta put on a performance i gotta let everybody know like i still got it and ben was a tough opponent and um i put on a good show you know by the way Joe, that was a nice judo throw you did on him (laughs) oh thanks man thanks that's from the streets i didn't even know what that move was man (laughs) you know i felt it and i did it that's from that's from the projects right there (laughs) dude you are so tough like we sparred a couple times in the cage man and you're like for not knowing any jiu-jitsu you're very hard to like control dude you're explosive and like you understand the game just just by feeling it and that's like very hard to do yeah, you know, one, th- one the way I got the experience is we did a lot of wrestling, street wrestling, and in the projects. We would just get out there and we would wrestle. We would do stuff, you know, that we seen on TV. We didn't know the name of it, but we knew how to do it. You know, so, you know, ever since I was a kid, that's what we did in the streets was wrestle and box in the backyard with boxing gloves. Um, I didn't start competing until I was 26 years old. You know, I, I didn't, that's the first time my dad was a, a professional. You know, he had all these gyms all around wherever I was. I didn't compete. And, uh, but I had the skills because I've been doing this since a kid. He's been training me. I've been in the streets fighting, wrestling as a kid in the projects. It's just, uh, I think that definitely helped me out, Jeff. Yeah, for sure. Dude, you are amazing. For, Man, I, I'm a black belt jiu-jitsu. I roll. Joe Joe is a fucking incredibly hard to hold to the mat. He's just like, all right, I'm just going to stand up. And then <laughs> jiu-jitsu doesn't work, dude. Like, that, that, yeah. he, he literally does that. It, like, it, good luck holding Joe Taylor down. There's no uh, way. Yeah, Joe, Joe's got to be, like, the best athlete fighter. You know what I'm saying? Like, he just can move. And that, I believe the ath- athleticness um, definitely plays advantage. You know, it helps out. You know, it definitely does help out. Um you know, it's just, you know, if you got someone that's not an athlete, you're going against an athlete, most likely that athlete's going to work or win, you know. But if you got that guy who ain't an athlete, but he, he works hard and busts his ass every day, you know, harder than that guy that has that gift, he's going to whoop that guy's ass, um, you know. But, yeah, Jeff, man, we rode around a, a bunch of times, me and you, man. And, I know, uh, I love it. You're, you're a monster, <laughs> dude. You're a monster. <laughs> and you're a great teacher. And I feel very comfortable working with you. I, I really do. Every time I'm I walk. Glad, Anytime you want to work out, dude, I'm always, I'll make time for you. You're the champ, dude. You know, like. Thanks, bro. 
I appreciate it. And uh, like your your energy is awesome. You're always looking out for people. Like I've never seen you say a bad thing about anybody that didn't deserve it to, you know, like Thank you only you. say bad shit about people that are bad people. Like, right. and I like that. And Thanks, I, I would love to work with you, man. And Thank you work with all the good people too. That's, that's amazing. Thank you. No, but love, man. Yeah. <laughs> Carol uh, keeps chiming. It's like, boom, fuck a chaka laka laka. Yeah. That just <laughs> <Carol Andrews. laughs> <What up>? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Um, so are you you just said like you want to get into belt or is your goal to go into MMA too? Like be a yeah, there as well. I've been I've been talking to the matchmakers for Bellator for the last two years. For the last two years. I've been talking to two matchmakers. Let me tell you, oh man, you want to hear how this, this story how I got in touch with Bellator? Yeah. One, for night, sure. one night I was bored and it was like two in the morning. I said, yo, let me let me Google the owner of Bellator. And what's his name? Scott what? Scott Coker. Uh, yeah, I Googled him. I, I found his email, and I, he had, like, five emails on Google. So I emailed every one of his contacts, and I copied and pasted, bro. I swear to God. <laughs> and he fucking messaged me back, dude. That's awesome. He, he messaged me back, and he uh, he's like, I'm going to send you to – I'm going to forge your messages to some matchmakers. And this was two years ago. And I've been talking to the matchmaker. I'm like, hey, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm like, yo, I just beat up Ben Parrish. He fought for Bellator twice. I'm like, I'm ready. Give me a fight. You know, they're like, I'm a replacement fighter. So they got me on the list, but I'm a replacement. If somebody at 185 or 205 get hurt, they'll call me. But my thing is, they said, oh, we only deal with contract fighters. Well, give me a one-fight contract, and then guarantee you're going to sign me. But, hey, we're negotiating. We're trying yeah, to get should, uh, What about, can Mix hook you up? I don't know if you're looking for management or not, but maybe Pat can hook you up. Who, Pat Mix? Yeah. Yeah, well, I talked to Pat. See, I don't go, I don't ask people for anything. You know, I, right. I put the work in. I don't really ask. But I'm going to tell you what Pat told me. Pat told me after that fight um, at the casino in March, Pat was like, yo, you fought a legit guy. And he was like, great job, man. He like, that dude's legit. You know, he fought in Bellator twice and, and you got to win. He said he was gonna put a word in for me, man. And yeah. I ain't nothing from Bellator yet. So Damn. that yeah. sucks. Well, I'll shoot this a pass. See what he says. <laughs> I'll tag but, him in this too. Yeah, but no, Pat, Pat said he was gonna do it. But you know, I don't ask anybody or I don't check up on him. You know, if it happens, it happens. I, I love Pat, man. And um, maybe I might just take him in Facebook one more time, refresh his mind. Yeah, yeah. I'll send him to Facebook too, man. Like I want to see everyone from here do well. Like Pat's doing well, Saul's doing well, dude. Like you, you made it in glory. You were like in the elite as as, as far as you can go in striking. Yeah, like you were at the pedestal. Now it's time to get MMA too. Yeah, it's MMA. I'm getting old, so I got. I want. I just want to get this in with Bellator, and then just retire. You know, yeah. but I can't wait forever. So at, maybe when I get off this, I'm gonna email the matchmakers and be like, "Hey, I'm still here waiting," but. You know, if it's yeah, meant man. to be okay. That'd be great. You do, like, uh, that bare gym fighting? Too, I'm sorry, Ray, go ahead. Hey, Joe, will you do bare knuckle fighting if uh, they mm. wanted uh, you to fight for them? Um, No. <laughs> I love it. They got, you know, only way I'll do that, man, We that's, that's bare knuckles. And you ain't ain't nobody 20,000, 30,000. You got, I got to fight for 50 to 100,000 bare knuckles. You know, the money talks, that's some real shit. Like, we, we bare knuckles. I can do it with gloves and MMA, but you got to pay me more money to do gotcha. the bare knuckle. Yeah, crazy. Way oh, more. Yeah. Way You'd more. You'd be all cut up. You're too pretty for that shit, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I am. But, you know, <laughs> but, yeah, I can't do that, man. That's real deal stuff. That's, you know, you got to get paid. Money talks for that. You know, yeah, MMA, yeah, yeah. it's just bare knuckles. That's dangerous, man. <laughs> That's so that's I, mean, I, I, Joe, I agree with you 100, man. 100 grand and up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll do it then. That's yeah. a, that's a dangerous sport, man. And you know, them some tough guys that do that. You want to like talk about your gym a little bit? I saw you put in a sauna. You got like your wrestling coach now. So what what's going on at your gym, man? And where's that? And how can people come train with you? Um, my gym is located in Lockport. It's 30 Pine Street, Lockport. Um, we have our boxing and kickboxing classes for adults Monday through Friday, 6 to 7. Uh, for kids, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, 5 to 6. 
um we just basically we you know we teach basic boxing and kickboxing and it we work with the kids in our community um you know we do have a membership fee but we also offer kids that can't afford it low income we just allow them to come for free no matter what just to keep them off the streets so we had the boxing and kickboxing and downstairs we have a it's a, a game room uh pool table ping pong playstations and xboxes all that for the kids down there and it's not just for kids it's also for adults too because i spend a lot of my time down there i tell my girlfriend <laughs> go yeah i tell my girlfriend go on the train and i'd be downstairs playing pool and stuff <laughs> you know god's definitely been blessing me i do have a sauna um at our gym uh it's a it's a one hour use for the sauna is 15 dollars. um that's pretty cheap if you look up you know sauna you know saunas um that you can use and they go for 35 40 bucks an hour you know so i just try to keep the prices reasonable that's awesome man especially in yeah. today's economy and like i always see like oh you're like no oh, man i don't know how i'm gonna do the gym and then like you're so motivated to do it again and like as a gym owner myself i understand like oh sometimes it's a strain but phenomenal <laughs> man your facility is great so i always want to help plug you and get people into your gym and man like it's, it's a good thing you're doing for the community yeah, where you at right now, Jeff? Uh, what, what, I'm at the Niagara Climbing Center. That's where you're at? You're, you're yeah, at? that's where Integrity's at. Okay, I might just swing out there, surprise you one day. Yeah, heck yeah, man. We'll take a picture and like, I'll be like, the World Champion Taylor's at my place, man. I'll be so excited. <laughs> hey, and congratulations, man. Congrats. Thanks. I had Mike Stevens came in today, and uh, I had Derek Patterson, and we had um, uh, Brett Malone, so we, we had a good sparring session today, man. We had uh, two pro fighters, a guy that's like could be a pro, and then you know Brett Malone. So and plus yeah. my students, so it was like uh, it was a good sparring today, man. We had yeah, a good that's awesome, man. That's awesome. Um, we got this, you know. I, I purchased um, I purchased a lot, some land about three years ago, and um, so I'm also building a four thousand square foot sports and recreation center in the city of Lockport. And that program is going to also allow kids to come for free. Um, 4,000 square foot. We plan on putting a half court basketball uh, court in there, um, having green turf. It's going to be sports and recreation, you know, outside picnic benches, grills. We want to give back to the community. And we also want a place for the, you know, the kids to come. Dude, that's, that's, that's incredible, that's man, what you do for the kids. And, and, you, know, you know, with me, it's like, uh, it's it's what I want to do. You know, like I said, I was born and raised in the projects. And where I'm building this gym at, the, you got two projects that are probably five minutes away, you know. And then you got two schools, a middle school and an elementary school that, that's three minutes away. It's the perfect spot, perfect location. You know, there ain't nothing within 20, uh, there's nothing within 10 miles, you know, up for these kids walking distance for these kids, you know, so now it's right down the street from them. That's amazing, man. I love to death everything I do. Not only that, the city has a Joe Taylor day. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. I love this story too. October 1st is uh, Joseph Taylor's day. Um, I was on my way to apprenticeship. This is about, man, you got me going way back. This is about 12 years ago. I was on my way to school for carpentry and uh, this this paraplegic guy crashed into a telephone pole and um, knocked out the power and everything. I'm just sitting there like, damn, he hit that telephone pole hard and his head was down. I thought he was dead, but um, the van lit up, just lit up in flames. And uh, I was like, damn, you know, I'm just like shocked. Like, damn, I never seen a van light up like that. And a guy just knocked out at the steering wheel and uh, a detective pulled up and he was trying to open up the door, the driver's side door, and um, he couldn't get it. So I was like, oh, here goes Joe Taylor. I gotta go, go help an officer, officer out real quick. So um, I ran across the street and um, first I ran into Walgreens and grabbed a fire extinguisher and I ran back and I, I was like, flash, I swear, I was shoo, shoo, real bad. <laughs> and I was thinking, so I threw it to some lady. The only thing I remember was some lady was in front of the hood. And I'm like, here, take this. So I gave her the fire extinguisher. And then me and the cop jumped in the back of the van. And we pulled him out. He was in a wheelchair, confined to a wheelchair. And we pulled him out, dragged him out. 
Um, and I went to school. You know, I left and went to school, shook the cops in and went to school. And my teacher wrote me up. He was like, you're late again. He's like, oh, late. And I'm like, no, listen. I'm like, yo, I told him the story. He didn't believe me. <laughs> I was like, oh, shut up. And then later that, <laughs> later that night, he called me. My teacher called me and said, dude, you're on Channel 4 News. And I'm like, for real? And yeah, so uh, I made the news off that. But they gave me my own day for that, for assistant. And, you know, I would do it right now if I have to. Same thing. That's awesome, man. For Dang. anyone that doesn't understand, like, your whole career, your whole livelihood, well, maybe not at the time your whole livelihood, but your livelihood is, like, with your fist, dude. Like, these make your money sometimes. So, like, you going in there, like, you could get burned bad and not be able to punch for months. And, like, could, like that's a serious risk to you. And that's, yeah. That's, that's so, so brave of you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I know you'll do the same thing, Jeff. And, yeah. um. You but my too. hands aren't worth money like yours, dog. Yours are worth a lot of money. <laughs> well, they, somebody, they, well, one of these big promotion companies need to come on, come inside me because you know I'm getting I'm getting older and uh, you know I'm fighting and I'm fighting, but I'm getting tired, man. Yeah, keep on the fight, dude. You're so good. Like people, yo, yo, Joe, I'm gonna help you out, Joe. I gotta I gotta put up some words for you for the um, Bellator people. Yeah, if you can. I appreciate that. You know, the more they hear about me, maybe they'll be like, all right, we'll figure something out. Yeah, but, we'll try and get a word in for it, too. Ray's got a good pull with the bare knuckle boxing people, so Ray's yeah. always trying to get the bare knuckle <laughs> boxing going on. We, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people have been hitting me up, a lot of these promoters and stuff. We, um, you remember Thriller? That, yeah. That, yep. yep. They hit me up last year. Thriller wanted me to fight in August, but I guess they ran into some money issues or something. But they hit me up and they wanted to drop me like a, a quarter million to fight for them. And I kept that on the low low, but then it just failed. So, um, you know, people are hitting me up and, um, you know, hopefully one of these days we'll be able to connect and make it happen for some real money. And hopefully, time, you, man. hopefully like, you fight one of the Paul brothers. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I'll fight. I'll, I'll tell you the truth, man. I'll fight anybody. I don't even care if the money's right. You know, like yep. right now, I don't know anything about Chris uh, Romanowski. I know he's from Scotland. I know he yeah. fought Stuart Graham. Stuart Graham is who I fought last year. I flew him in from Scotland and I fought him. Uh, this Chris guy, he beat Stuart Graham about what four or five years ago. Did you get some info, Ray? Uh, no, I didn't get no info on him. <laughs> All right. Well, I, 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 so we'll, we'll try and get him on Wednesday, and we'll pick his brain, and I'll send it to you so you can yeah. see it too. Yeah. So like him, like I don't even. I just feel like I don't even look at people's tapes or videos. You know, I just want to see what you look like. You know, I'll watch probably like one minute of your film and see what you do. You know, just look at you, look at your style. You know, and that's it. It is what it is. You know, you you. I don't. You know, it is what it is. You can throw knees, you can throw leg kicks. I'm prepared for anything. And so, you guys are on my level. And you guys ain't even on the level of the guys I want to fight. So, man, I only thought I could tell you, I'm, I'm going to beat his ass. I'm going to beat his ass, too, because I'm mad. This this fight cost me, like, like a lot of money to put together. And um, every, every minute is something else. So I got a lot of emotion inside of me. And uh, he might so have everyone that's listening. You guys all heard that Joe Taylor spent a lot of money, so that means we gotta buy all the tickets. So let's make sure we get it's all the be tickets sold out. for Joe. Yes, yeah, so let's sell this place let's out. This June third, lights out, Lock Court, New York. Uh, first fight one, one o'clock, one to four, amateur boxing. Um, then we have our live music, seven one six showcase from five to seven. And then we have my world title fight, 8 p.m. to 11, come through. Um, that is going out at the Cornerstone Arena in Lockport. When we uh, when I uh, post this on YouTube and everything, I'll add all the links to it. And then we'll uh, every time I share it, I'll put the link on it, too. And then for sure, we'll try and get Chris Chris on, too. And then uh, I'll, I'll see if Ray can set up for Wednesday night. And then uh, I'll do it with him Wednesday night so he'll fly in. He'll be all tired, and maybe he'll give us some little extra uh, information for you, too. Hey, yeah. Joe, when, when I sent him a message, I was like, hey, you know, we're going to do a podcast with Joe Taylor. You want to get on? He was like, I mean, I, I'm in uh, Scotland. Um, but he said, I might, I might come on. 
So we're gonna try to get them Wednesday though. Yeah, well tell them to get on. Shit. Tell them to I, tell, tell them promoter said he's gotta do media and then like yeah. this is media. <laughs> yeah, Ray said that to him, Blake. The promoter said get on. You probably all wouldn't right. understand them anyways. <laughs> he got a real heavy accent. Yeah, they all do. You know, Perfect. But they're good people, but you know, this is a sport. This is a sport where he's coming over here to beat me up, you know, in front of yeah. my and my friends. You know, it's a sport though, but you know, you gotta change your whole mindset. So I got respect for him, but like I said, that ambulance and two EMTs and the two white <laughs> doctors, that cost me a lot of money. He got to ride, man. <laughs> They got to do their job or something. I'm going to make them work. Yeah, that's funny because if they don't work, they still get paid the same. So they might as well yeah. have to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So People don't understand how hard it is to put on a show. So I've been working with Keith with K4. And I listen for everything that he's got to do to put his event together. Yeah. And I understand what you're going through, man. For you to go through this and go through training camp all at the same time. Oh, it's it tough. says so much about your personality and how, like, how on point you are getting all this shit done. Yeah, thank you, man. I thank God and I thank my the, my girlfriend for one, Karen. She helps out a lot. Um, with Keith at the K4, man, his shows are getting better and better and better. And um, I wish I could have made it out to the last event. I forgot where we went. We were out of town. I think I was in, I, I forgot where I was. But um, yeah, we definitely wanted to come to that event. And you guys all always do awesome. Yo, Ray, what's up with them them boys that you don't like, man? Oh <laughs> what you got to me? What's that all about, man? Oh man, it's just that uh, you know, they didn't like what I said about them about, you know, I, I don't pick them for to win fights and they get and they, they ain't like that. So and where are they from? Uh Richmond, Indiana. And what they do? They come up here. Do they fight up here? Yeah, they fight. They, they, you know, they run their mouth, bringing body bags and all this other stuff. And they, uh, they're not even professional, man. They don't even get their blood work done. Yeah. Um, you know, somebody had ringworms and shit. So, oh you know, my like, god, dude! It yeah, looked, it looked yeah, like yeah. bad herpes. It didn't look like ringworm. <laughs> <laughs> man, you're, I, you're digging a hole in them. You are <laughs> burying them. <laughs> Man, they they came in and they talk a lot of junk, and then Ray just called them on and on their like shit talking. Ray's like, man, you guys only. He's like, he was he was a bad commentator. He actually helped them sell a lot of tickets, okay. so they got credit for their ticket sales. <laughs> Ray came to talk a lot of shit, and like, so people don't notice about Ray. And I'm gonna I'm gonna blow you in right now, Ray, about what what a nice guy you are. So he talked all this shit about them, and then when his friend friends came in to buy tickets. Ray uh, gave the ticket commission to the 765 guys after talked all that shit about him. So, like, Ray's trying to help these guys out. And then that uh, whatever that Jacob kid's name is was so disrespectful and talked all that shit to you. Like, he said he was going to slap you and stuff. So, like, yeah. they don't even know what you did for him. Like, you're trying to help these guys out. And then they're, like, fucking assholes about it. So, like, <laughs> I, I have to blow you up about what a nice guy you are. And, like, you're helping sell a show. You're doing your job to sell tickets. And then these guys take it all personal, and this guy's like, "Man, he's retarded." No, no offense, it's like, I don't mean to say that word, but <laughs> man, he's so dumb. <clears throat> so that's the seven six five story, Joe. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Ray's a good dude. Like, if you want to help sell tickets, Ray's like, man, you should give Ray some ticket sales. We're gonna try and do that for K four too, for your next show too. Like, we'll we'll try and sell tickets for you. We'll try. We'll move them and. We'll be real honest with you. We're not trying to like make any profit off it, but like we'd like to help you out to make sure that you're 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 getting all your sales in, man. Like trying to yeah. sell tickets for you. Well, I appreciate that, man. I definitely truly appreciate that. And um, you know, like I said, um, you know, it's I'm doing it to make money, but I'm also doing it to have these fighters stay active. Nobody wants to go to a gym where that you can't go fight somewhere, you yeah. know. What them guys are doing in Rochester, what Keith is doing in Buffalo, and what I'm doing here at Lockport, and then you got Ray Cassells in Niagara Falls. Like we need we we need promoters so that these gyms can compete. Um, you know, so I definitely appreciate that, man. And I I wish uh one thing is that um these promotion companies will we, we'll work together instead of booking our fights. All uh, within the same time, 
Like mm-hmm. if we communicate it, if we communicate it and try, you know, like some people communicate, but not all of us communicate. But if we communicate and set this up, like one person does April, one person does May, you know, and then and we all work together and match these fights, we all gonna walk away happy, you know, and everybody's gonna be matched up. But I, I, I don't think there's a, you know, like people want to compete and stuff. I compete when it comes to fighting, you know. Business, I'm going to handle my business. I'm going to do whatever whatever I do to make people happy. I'm not going to compete against a black man in business, but I will compete with my hands and fight. You know what I'm saying? For sure. I, I agree with you. I think if we could like set up the shows, we could sell the shows a lot better too. And uh, I work with K4 and I try and get the word out for K4. I'd like to like do this for, for you too. Like I don't even really... Like, I don't want, I want you to like pay me or anything. I just, you send me fighters, we'll put them on, we'll advertise your show. Like, we'll put it out weeks ahead of time and we'll, we'll move tickets for you, man. Like, that's, Thanks. I want to try to do that. I want to get these guys fights. I want to make fights big and I want uh, opportunity for promoters and athletes to talk. And like, what sells fights is selling the fighters. And like, I, that's what my whole goal has been for the last like 15 years is to like let people see how awesome fighters are. And yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, they put on the show, you know. They put on a show. I love I love watching the fights. And you know, I and every promoter that is is working hard that to put the fights together, you know, I res- I respect what they're doing. And um a lot of other people they respect what they're doing too, because it takes a lot of hard work and um, you know, you have to be mentally strong for this. You do, there's so many ups and downs. I know like Oh, how, where, how do you want the seating? Uh, okay. All right. Well, now you got too many people, so you can't have the seating like that. How do you want to do like all this, all the while while you're trying to set up your fight, man, that's right. That's so crazy that you do that. It's tough, man. Then I'll be like, oh, your ring's not the right size. You need to uh, tighten the ropes. You need to smooth <laughs> out the flatness. You need to, oh, the, the turnbuckles aren't tight enough. Like all that shit's going on. Like while you're in the back trying to get ready to fight and you got to like go out and deal with all that shit. I like, I understand, man. Like I understand how hard it is. Yeah. All the props to you. Thank you, brother. Yeah, that's not easy. That's not easy, man. I, I, man, I feel for you, Joe. I know you got a lot. You, you've been busy. Got a lot of work to do. So you yeah, know what I mean? yeah, definitely, man. A lot of work to do, and um, I'm just gonna keep going as hard as I can until I run out of gas, and we'll see when that is. I know you want to get out of here, so I got two more questions for you. One, uh, do you have like a head coach right now, or are you your own head coach? So I have to break my down. Or... Head coach. You know, Corey Webster is always my head coach. Um, as long as you know, he's my head coach. You know, if 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 a head coach, um, you know, somebody comes and they're like, "Hey, I want to be here for you five days a week," and this, 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 this and I got a lot of fights coming up down the road and Corey don't have the time. You know, Corey, Corey will always be my head coach, but um, I will, I would allow other people to join us, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like wondering if you had someone, because you said you watched like one minute of film and that's it. I was wondering if you had a guy break it down and like you wore combinations against the guy's stuff or just like that's all I need and then I'll feel it in the ring. No, no, I watch it. You know, like I got, you know, Corey Webster, I got Dan Dorfman. Um, them are two of my coaches. Corey is my head coach. He's been my head coach since I started. Um, my personal trainer, I personal train myself. Um, yeah. You know, I had personal trainers. Um, but I feel like I'm doing a great job personal, you know, training myself. I do have people that help me at times, but 90% of the training, I do it alone. Um, You're a brick yeah. shithouse, dude. You don't, like... Look at you, man. Like, it's definitely working out for yourself. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. But, you know, I don't even lift weights anymore. You know? <laughs> I don't. Um, I just work. My most important thing is my cardio. Yeah. And because uh, I know I could fight. You know, I could fight. But if I run out of gas, I can't fight. So my most important thing is my cardio. Because I like to. I, wanna, I don't want to run out of gas. I want to be able to do what I want to do. You know, I do run out of gas. There's times I do run out of gas. But... <laughs> Usually he's more tired than what I am. You know what I'm saying? That's because you just bash his brains in. Like we understand. <laughs> and number two, 
for your next show, I got old guy I'm looking to get matched up. He's like 54, about 185 pounds, and uh, he's got one fight. So, like, he fought on your last show, that old guy Butch that beat up Gearheart. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking to get him another fight. Uh, like, preferably someone that doesn't, like, so it, when you find in the 50-year-old category, most of these guys got, like, 30, 40 fights, and whether they're good or not, they got a lot of fights. Like, right. he's got one fight. I don't, like, every offer I get, the dude's got, like, 30, 40 fights. So yeah. if you got another older gentleman, whatever kind of shape he's in, doesn't matter if he's good or bad. Like, we're looking to get an evenly matched fight. How much like, he weigh? Uh, right now he's walking about 195, but he'd fight at 185, anywhere between 185 and, like, 190, and 95. Fighting what, what do you guys want, kickboxing? Yeah, kickboxing. He, he want to box? Uh, probably yeah, not. We got, a spot. we got a spot open this Saturday coming up June 3rd for amateur boxing. <laughs> if he wanted to box, I can, hey, boxing's easy because all you yeah. got to get is a physical and uh, that's it. Yeah. Dude, man, boxing is a million times easier to promote and cheaper than kickboxing. Yeah, I believe and, that. And if I got, you know what, I think I might have a guy for you, Jeff. So if you guys want to box this Saturday, at the amateur box and that lights out from one to four, I could probably match your guy up. Uh, I'll shoot him a text as soon as we get out of here. Uh, he's not watching. I can see he was watching. He's not watching right now. But uh, I'll shoot him a text. He skipped training today, too. So he missed out some good sparring today, Butch. But uh, I'll shoot him a text <laughs> right after this and see if he wants to fight. All right, man. I, we're always ready to go. Team Taylor right here. We always yeah. ready to go, man. That's awesome. what I'm – Yeah. All right, guys. Well, uh, I definitely, thank you so yeah. much for your time, Joe. I know you're super busy. I know you're at a family function, man. Like that, you take time off for K Man's Corner. We appreciate you. Oh, yeah, we man. appreciate you, Joe. Man, appreciate yeah, you for real, dog. You guys, man, in Caveman Corner, man, you guys rock, bro, for real. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate. <laughs> thank you, man. Have All a right. great day. Enjoy your uh, enjoy your family, dude. Like All make right. it work. Blessings. I'll see you guys. Yeah. See you All next right, week. Buddy. Yep. All right. Bye. Man, dude, we got Joe Taylor. Now we got everybody. Son of the legend. Son of the legend. <laughs> dude, that's so good. He said, like, ah, I'll give you, like, 15 minutes. He hung out with us for half hour. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, man. That's, event, right? hey, hey, man, that's got to be tough, man. Running a promotion and fighting at the same promotion. You're promoting. Dude, I know all the bullshit he goes through. Like, there's so many things you have to decide on. The layout, the music, we got coming in, DJ, the sounds, like every one of those, every decision that needs to be made, needs to be made. You got to have your insurance in, you got to set up your ambulance, you got to work with the commission, he's got to work with two commissions, he's got to work with a music company, he's got a lot of shit going on, man, like, yeah, dude, and he's got to fight, that's, that is very difficult. So I'm going to get his opponent on, I'm going to, I sent him a message like uh, 10 minutes ago, he didn't respond, Yeah, but, um, Time difference too, I, I man. Think we definitely could get him when he comes when he come here. We definitely could get him. Probably yeah, let's uh, Joe said we can say that he's got to do promotional work. So tell okay. him that we're we're working with uh, Taylor, uh Team Taylor, and uh, like this is a promotion he's got to do. Okay. For uh, like it, this is a promotional like obligation. So, so something <laughs> like that. Yeah, I'll tell him that. <laughs> yeah, and then we'll we'll just have like a super cool kind. It'll be nice to him, you know, like just like yeah. we are, like respectful, like we are everyone except for the seven six five guys. And uh, <laughs> like, dude, I'm sorry, I blew you up on that too. Nah, nah, no problem. I mean, like they don't, they need to know, like, dude, like you're trying to help these guys out, and they're, dude, they, they make me so mad when they do that. Like, the Dorian messaged me, the Dorian kid messaged me, and like yeah. he said, like he he doesn't want to do that shit, and he wants to be cool. So, like. I appreciate that 1000%. Dorian, like, I see that. And Skylar's always been super awesome to me. So, yeah. those two guys, like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on in that JK. Like, for some reason, he doesn't like you. And, like, that's fine. But they need to respect, like, what you're doing for them. Yeah. Like, we give them so much media. Like, you give them so much. And then, like, I know you get mad, too. So, like, you guys fire it out. <laughs> I'd be mad, too, though. Like, they, like, if they get personal, they should never talk some shit about Raycard's family, either. I don't like that at all. Yeah, you know, uh, that you know that Jacob guy said something about my mom, something sexual. Everything got to be sexual with him, you know. Yeah. Like I just don't understand that. Yeah, I don't. I don't he sounds like a little third grader. <laughs> he does a little bit. Um, so a tournament happened yesterday. This uh, the tournament was amazing. Um, oh yeah, it was really good. Josh Catry did an awesome job. Um, he always does. Always. Yeah. Uh, don't forget. 
to check out Joe Taylor's um, Joe Taylor's fights, there are going to be at uh, the Cornerstone Arena. That's one Greg Lewis Way, Lockport, New York. Uh, one to four for the boxing. Uh, I, I don't see what time the music. He said the music was five to some other time. And then the kickboxing is eight to eleven. That's what I'm super interested in. Floor is seventy five dollars. Bleachers are thirty five. Um, are you gonna make it out if your COVID clears up? I know you got the COVID right now. Yeah, hopefully it clears up. I'll definitely go. Yeah, I'm gonna try and make it out too. Um, grappling Industries is that day, so maybe I'll try and go after Grappling Industries. And man, I'm I'm excited to see Joe fight. Oh yeah, I like Joe Taylor. I like I like I was watching this fight. The last one he had at the casino when he, he did that judo throw. <laughs> oh yeah. man, Joe's a Joe's a good athlete, man. He he's a good athlete. He could fight. He comes to fight. I haven't been to a fight that I have to pay for. And man, I think the last time I was there was when uh, Pat Mix fought. No, I, I didn't pay for that one. I did buy a ticket. I bought a ticket for that one when uh, Pat Mix fought kickboxing. I oh yeah, I remember that. I was there. I was I was there for that one. Yeah, I think that's the last time I bought a ticket. I can't remember the last time before that. I'm always working fights. It'd be nice to just go watch one for a change. Yeah. We got we to gotta find Butcher Fighter. Yeah, I gotta get, I'm got i trying to get Butcher Fight. He wants to fight one more time. And he's not getting any younger either, so. You, need to I, I, you, see, with, you see with Joe Taylor, too, with the boxing, <laughs> I know some boxers – and can um trainers in Connecticut who probably has some boxers who would like probably yeah. to come in and fight. I'm not sure Bush wants to box. I don't think he's ever really just boxed. Like we only kickbox. I don't think he's ever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, it's a whole other, that's, that, that's a that's a whole nother game right there, boxing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so we have to re relearn our stance and relearn the way we box. Like he doesn't box like a boxer, so there's a lot to fix with that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we yeah, could do it, yeah. but I'm not sure that he really wants to do it. Maybe, nah. maybe we do it for the weekend, though. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do that's, it. That's not a, uh, especially fighting a team Taylor guy. That's probably not the best matchup. But like, he's a fighter. He can decide what he wants to do. You know, like I'm. Yeah, I'm but, him, but, but yeah, don't, don't, don't do it. Don't, don't. Not only that, you gotta be smart. Got but he's got a lot of weight, weight to cut too, probably to make 85. I'm just saying, like, yeah. I'll score that number off because that's his fight weight. That's not what he's walking around right now. So like, he's gonna spend a lot of time cutting weight too. So. Maybe not the best idea, but, you know, like, sometimes the best idea is not what we do. But I would advise as his coach not to take that fight. Man, my ears look jacked up. Hell, yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I never realized my ears look so funny. My ears are really funny looking. Yeah, Sorry, but guys. remember, with a guy with ears like that is dangerous. So you are dangerous, Gabe, man. Yeah. They might pop and bleed all over. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I'll, I'm going to try and get Dr. Kroll on next week for next week Sunday. I'd okay. like to talk about uh, a lot of stuff like stretching, and uh, we haven't, I have, we haven't been on since we moved into the new building. Um, so I want to like pump uh, integrity a little bit, pump his okay. business, um, talk a lot about training, uh, like how to train, how to do it right. Um, he's always a great guest to have on. He's always got a lot to say. Super smart guy. Love him to death. One of my best friends, and he's uh, he can kick pretty good too. Yeah, I could. I, listen, I could see him doing a kickboxing fight and fucking somebody up. <laughs> he did do a kickboxing fight. Oh, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have him tell. This is a great story, and we're gonna save this. Um, save this for his episode when he comes on on Sunday. But I just want to say that when Doctor Kroll kickboxed. He started a brawl that had like 20 fans come in from outside of the ring, came into the ring and swarmed the ring. Oh my God. It was <laughs> it was Conor McGregor like. So oh. uh, man, that's a great story. And uh Wait, we'll, uh, hey, we'll, hey we'll, man, what weight class will he fight if he was to fight again? I don't know. Like, I'm not even sure what weight he fought then. Uh, I fought on that same card, so like I didn't weigh in. There was no weigh-ins. There's no blow. It was in the good old days. It was 95. Oh, okay, so okay. <laughs> it was 1995 to set the stage. It was uh fly by night kind of kind of fights. Yeah. All right. Uh anything else you got, Ray? How you feeling, man? You look uh, a little sweaty over there. I wish I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm just sweating from up. <laughs> I'm all right, uh, Hopefully I get better. You know, I feel a little I feel better, but I'm still I'm still sick. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll get you all healed up. Uh, remember, check out Joe Taylor and uh, 
Oh, I forgot the address already. Let me go back and look. Uh, Taylor Promotions presents Lights Out June 3rd, Cornerstone Arena. One Greg Lewis Way, Lockport, New York, USA Amateur Boxing, 1 to 4 p.m., uh, $30 floor. Uh, VIP tables, they still have their $400 for eight seats. WKA Kickboxing, 8 to 11, VIP sold out. Floor $75, bleachers $35. Make sure you guys make it there. Caveman will be there. Ray's going to be there. Um, this is a great interview. I can't believe we had uh, the Son of the Legend on. Next time we have him on, we'll have him tell the Son of the Legend story, too. I know uh, we were already past 30 minutes when he was on, so I didn't want to ask him. But, uh, yeah. man, like, listen to him. He's an amazing guy, dude. He's done a lot for the community, continues oh, yeah. to do a lot for the community. And we uh, we need to come support his shows, man. Like, as a fight community, we need to do that. Oh, yeah. I agree 100%. All right, Ray, thank you for your time. I know you're sick, too. I appreciate you. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you Wednesday if we can get him on or any other night during the week. Uh, okay. Let me know because I'll have to cancel a private to get him on. So uh, we'll, have okay. to, uh, we'll have to make this work. Uh, Wednesday night worked really good. I can get him on and maybe you can pop on on the phone. We'll probably just ask him if we can get 30 minutes. That would be perfect. Okay. That's, All I'll, right. I'll, I'll, yep. I'll let him know. Ray's our business guy. If you want to get on the show, message Ray. And even though he's a sweaty mess right now, he probably did like two bumps, so he's ready to go for the show. And uh, he'll get you on. He's our he's our booker. Yep. He's the one that makes all the magic happen behind the scenes. <laughs> Appreciate oh, you. Yeah. Dude. I love you to death, man. You're one love of the you best. Too, People don't know how good you are, man. <laughs> Appreciate Ray too. Ray's a really good guy, dude. Like he's got the heart of a lion. And he's like very empathetic too. Like, man, like I can't believe people talk shit about you. I want to punch them in the face when they do. That's how I'm six five guys get to me too. It's all right. I, you know, I don't care. Let them yeah. talk. Yeah. Let them I talk. Care. I really don't care. Yeah. All right. We're out of here. Integrity Martial Arts, yeah. thank you. Please click and subscribe to every channel we have, YouTube, Facebook, everything we do. Obviously that helps us. Uh, we're almost to a thousand subscribers on Facebook. Then you guys can donate us money too. Maybe we'll do a Patreon soon, uh, so we can get some money back out of this too, because we enjoy money. And uh, Ray's got to do better at showing. He said he was gonna uh, do the click, like, and subscribe at the beginning of the show, but he failed. But oh yeah, failed. yeah. Right. He's, you're the one to tell me that we gotta do it, and then you. Yeah. Like, I think wait, 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 a great me, segment would me, be like Ray. Give, give me a pass. I'm sick today. I'm sick. Give me a pass. Yeah, yeah. We'll give you a sick pass for sure. <laughs> Give me a pass. All right, guys. Man, I'm sick. We're out of here. We love you to death. All right, guys. Peace.